By the spring of 1868, during and after Johnson's impeachment trial and after his escape by one vote of impeachment, it was clear that Grant's candidacy did not lack a practical foundation. In other words, it wasn't a demented, mad idea that the general become president. He had handled delicate political negotiations with Johnson and the radicals with enough skill to convince the Republican leadership that he would do nicely as president. Even though Grant himself had no experience in with elections, he had never run for office or electoral politics uh, uh, in up until this time, uh, these years. And he didn't even want to be president. He kept saying, I don't want to be president. I don't want to be president. But there you go. At the Republican convention held in Chicago in May of 1868, he was selected by a wide margin as expect expected. His stature and reputation towered above all others, with his name forever linked with the martyred Lincoln and the sacred Union cause. He had the unqualified support of the vast majority of Northern veterans. In short, Grant believed the country was on the precipice of disaster. That's the only reason why he would ever agree to be president. And this is how he explained it in a letter to a friend. I could not back down without, as it seems to me, leaving the contest for power for the next four years between mere trading politicians, the elevation of whom, no matter which party won, would lose to us largely the results of the costly war which we have gone through.